mid-70s. Um, I've always been involved with art, um, fiber, pottery, uh, and I was able to take a, an adult ed course on making stained glass, and that was just a whole lot of fun. It was, it was a puzzle. Um, and then shortly after I took classes for that, I uh, was able to go to a uh, glass blowing studio in Benicia, California, and was able to um, try my hand at glass blowing. And that was, that just set my whole life's course in a different path. It was so much fun and it was so exciting um, that I continued on. I studied at San Francisco State to be a glass blower um, and uh, then continued on with just education as far as glass was involved. So now I can make my own glass for my stained glass windows. Um, I do a lot of lamp working and fusing. Um, so it's, um, there, it's an endless, um, amount of things that you can you can do with the medium and I think that's what keeps me interested is there's so many things to still try. Predominantly I am self-taught um, but I did go like I said I did study at San Francisco State to learn the basics of glass blowing um, but I also blew glass for 16 years in a production house with my partner Chuck Pritchard um, and we basically kind of taught one another and after blowing glass together for 16 years that was pretty much our education as far as that goes. Um, but I've also always continued on um, uh, studying with other glass artists just in different techniques and such that I can either transfer into my stained glass or into my blown glass. So it's an ongoing education. I still take classes. I, I took classes um, this last year um, from um, Ed Schmidt. So it's, it's ongoing. I get my inspiration actually a lot from nature and just the things around me. Um, it's, um, it's pretty amazing um, what nature has to offer. There's just an endless, I mean the sunsets, the, the, a stone when you're, you know, you see a particular rock or a shell, um, the, you know, there is no, there's no, almost nothing that, that can't inspire you. Um, I, I'm a, I, I feel like myself as, more, as a positive person and so I'm, I'm more inclined to things that are bright and not necessarily dark, um, but you know, inspiration, and it comes from the oddest places sometimes, which is, which is a really good thing. Glass blowing is probably the most challenging thing I have ever attempted to do. Um, it, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of steps, and you have to do the steps in the exact order to be successful at it. Um, but saying that, there's still a lot of fun things that come out of the, when you make a mistake, um, things that you weren't exactly expecting. And so you just kind of have to embrace whatever comes your way with that in that regard. But, um, and I, I feel very fortunate to be able to be still doing after 30 some odd years something that I really, really love doing. Um, so I work really hard at what I do, but it doesn't feel like hard work. I just really enjoy the media. Um, so, and working with Jim has been just awesome. It's like opening up another, whole other chapter of, you know, collaborating with him and it's just been, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I have been teaching glass almost uh, shortly after I learned how to do it. There's, I had some really good instructors and they were very forthcoming and giving as far as their information went. And one of the things that they taught me was to, that, you know, everybody might be involved in doing glass, but nobody does it exactly the same. And that you should not feel like someone is copying you or there's not things that you can share with them because they're gonna bring their own take on those things. And I've taught it at the college level. I've had some of my students go on to study glass at other universities. And there's, there's nothing that gives me more pleasure than to have one of my students win a prize. I, I choked up just talking about this. Um, it's, it's really special. It is really special. The most challenging part to me is uh, a lack of time. I'm not really good at time management in that I'm so involved in what I do and, and I'm so interested in going on to the next step that um, my biggest challenge is just finding the time um, to devote to it and, and still <laughs> play with my family and, and make time for um, the day-to-day the -day things that you have to do in order to exist. Um, so that, that's probably my biggest challenge. I'm, um, 
I'm real, I'm learning to say no, <laughs> but that that also has been a bit of a challenge. But, but the time, just having time, I could spend my entire life in that studio, and I would be perfectly happy. But unfortunately, <laughs> so the things that need to get done. Um, I think that the most interesting thing is that I I try to challenge them. I want them my my goal is to have them think outside of the box, um, to not be afraid to fail, because there really isn't such a thing. Um, that should also be a learning experience. And um, I have seen some results um, that just amaze me. Um, it bothers me when somebody says, oh, well, you can't do that because that's not the way it's done. Um, perhaps that's not the way it's been done in the past, but that doesn't mean that someone can't come up with a new idea or new theory on how to achieve those results. And um, like I said, I have seen some of my students come up with things that just totally amaze me. Um, it, you just, they just can't be afraid, you know, try it. You know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But you usually learn something from that, even if it's not as successful or it doesn't turn out exactly the way you thought it was gonna turn out. Um, the upcoming workshops that I'm teaching here um, are going to be glass fusing and silk painting. Um, again, I was a fiber artist before I was a glass worker. Um, but uh, the wonderful thing about the silk painting is that it's also color um, and playing with color, which is uh, a lot of what uh, happens with stained glass, blown glass. Um, it's combining the colors and seeing what uh, reactions you get. The glass fusing um, is just a small technique um, in the big stream of glass making um, and it's again more of an introduction to that process. Uh, we don't go into great depth on that but um, it, it, just enough to um, see if a person is interested. It, glass making in any respect is extremely expensive to get involved in um, for, the, for the tools, for the materials, for the time, and um, I personally had taken classes where I, after I took the class, I just discovered I really didn't want to do that. And so rather than investing in all of those tools and the materials, this gives a person the opportunity to taste it, to find out if it is something that they would want to consider going, delving more deeply into. Um, so again, I, I approach it that way. It's like, you might like it, you might you might not, but at least you haven't, like I said, invested a lot of money and time into it before you find out. My name is Jim Rudding, and I'm a photographer, and I started way back when I was a very young child, taking pictures with a, uh, my mom's brownie. And I was very lucky when I was young that a neighbor saw my interest and gave me a very fancy German camera to play with when I was 10 years old. And I uh, took off from there. And I was a uh, photojournalist uh, during Vietnam. I was, uh, I was a professional photographer in Boston and New York. I, I did fashion work. And then I moved on to um, graphic design and I taught graphic design and photography for 15 years at the college level. So now I'm retired and I'm just having a lot of fun. collaboration started when I met Jim a few years ago at a gallery in Bellevue and um, I saw his um, portrait work and was very impressed with, with what I saw and then he showed me some images that he had made um, that he was referring to as mirror images and I immediately saw them as stained glass windows and so I asked him if it was okay if I took some of his images and turned them into windows and he graciously said yes, so it's <laughs> well, I kind of twisted his arm a little bit. Um, so we've been, we've been collaborating since then, and so we're both really excited about this exhibit. Um, yeah, well, I create new, I have new ideas, and I text the pictures to her, and 
and she tells me that she can't make that out of glass because it'll fall apart and it's, doesn't, it's the angles are wrong and who knew. So we've been doing this week and so I think we're making progress. I think we're making progress. So way back in the 70s, when it was film and printing in the darkroom, I had this idea to take, uh, make a print and then make another print that was where the negative was, was flipped over and so it was backwards and then put the two images together so that they mirror each other and create a whole new image. And I've been playing around with that idea for years now. and. Um, now with digital technology, it's, I can actually adjust the colors and make all kinds of very strange sometimes and often fun images. And that's what I have to show.